Our sound guy does it. Okay, I was wondering if it's feedback. When I talk, it's okay. I think we'll be okay. Because I'll hear myself like after I say a word, like one, two, three, and then I'll. I'm preferred. Yeah. We don't hear anything. Okay. Maybe when I actually play the video, it'll be fine. Um, all right. Uh, Larry K. Woodcock, thank you guys for making the time for me today. Uh, I know it's been a long road, and we have been on it with you guys from the beginning, but you all definitely had a feeling this was coming with this announcement on JJ's ninth birthday. How do you describe the feeling? of it all, you know, when you reflect on this entire journey. For it to have come to a conclusion, at least this chapter, for it to have come to a conclusion on his ninth birthday was um, the, the epitome of bittersweet. And we were relieved and I can't say happy, but more relieved that those charges came yesterday. Um, we're glad that they're here, but we still have to digest it all. And it just, it's just another roller coaster ride that we've been on for the last two years, two plus years um, already. So we're not done. It'll be, you know, then the trials, the trials will be coming up. And so, but we'll, we're, we feel like we're right now, we're three of three out of four. And so next our um, goal is seeing about Charles and focusing on Charles. That brings me to this, you know, because everyone following this case, the story begins in December 2019. But for you all, it, it unravels like when Charles was shot and killed July 11, 2019 in Chandler. But I really want you, if you can, specifically what triggered you both to really put the pressure on law enforcement like you did when you couldn't talk to JJ, when you couldn't see him, really seeing that something was wrong. Like This may be the most important thing you both have done in your life. Well, I, I think this started, uh, you indicated it started when Charles was murdered. Actually, for us, it started earlier than that when it actually started for me in 17 when i realized mm -hmm. my intuition was telling me that there's a problem going on between charles and and laurie and uh kay and i talked about it on a few occasions and and you know kay simply said that it's having to take care of a special needs child and, and i agree with that that's a lot of pressure. And especially for a young boy like JJ, who is so rambunctious, so intelligent. And, uh, and, and so it, it started for us prior to that. Then obviously the first nasty step was when Charles was murdered. No, well, go ahead, that's and, a story. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, that's for me. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and so it's been a, a long two years. Uh, as you've indicated, and uh, I, I think that that the steps that were taken yesterday on JJ's birthday were were really hard. It was yesterday was one of the hardest days we've ever had. Um, when they read the bill of indictment, the, the charges, uh, literally, Kay and I both just almost went blank. Uh, I, I was in the room with people we've been with now for a, oh, well over a year. And I literally forgot everybody's name in there. I mean, I just went blank. It just, everything was surreal. It like was, the yeah. world, It's like the world just stopped mm -hmm. for a little bit. For a while there yesterday. And uh, you both have been working so long towards this moment, like, you know, doing what you could do and really driving this out there to, to the media and you know, social media and doing what you had to do. And now this came to such a major development. And that indictment that you talk about, I want to bring this up, you know, prosecutors believe Lori and Chad's religious beliefs drove them to justify these murders. And you both have told me from day one, said it, Lori joined a cult. 
but even then when we, you know, back then, could you fathom that just some simple man in Idaho could influence her the way he did? Uh, I'm going to take this one. You go. <clears throat> I think that they were just the perfect storm meeting each other. But I also feel that if Lori hadn't met Chad, she still somehow would have blown up her world as she knew it. Not Maybe not to the extent of what it is today, but she was tired of her life. She wasn't happy. And uh, would she have murdered Charles? I don't know. But I, her life would have changed dramatically because she was not happy with what she was doing and with, with her life. So she would, have, she would have changed somehow. She was tired of being a mom to an autistic boy. She was tired of being a mom to a teenager. She was tired of being a wife to a man that completely spoiled her and she didn't appreciate anything he did for her. So that that would have changed, but murder, no. I think that's where she and Chad started feeding off of each other in a, in a very bad way, in, a, in an evil way. Because it all comes down to greed and lust and, self, and just selfishness. Yep. Greed and lust, that's, that's them right there. Well, Justin, you know, you just indicated that, uh, God, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, I think personally that this started, this became what it did today because Laurie was so greedy. And, and I think that as, as we've been told by other people that Chad thought he found a smoking hot loaded wife, girlfriend. And I, I think that it was probably as bad, about as much about money as, as anything else. But they use the religious, the, the, what they deem religious uh, to justify it in their minds. And it is, that was that was just an ends to a, a mean to an end or an ends to an end. That's what it was, yeah. and they just use that. I, you can't tell me that they truly, deep down, believe that. Lori is not that stupid. I don't know Chad, but I wouldn't think he's that stupid. So for you to, if you can tell me that the 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 Lord is telling you to go increase your your wife's life insurance policy, so a month later she's dead okay that's greed that that's all there is to it that's greed well it's pre it's greed and premeditation and, he knew what he was he doing. knew what he was doing they're not crazy please don't accept the fact or believe the fact that they think that they're they're psychologically unfit i got news for you they knew exactly what they were doing it was premeditated there's other people involved into it that knew this was premeditated, that knew what was going on, and never one time spoke up. And, and we, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. And, and I think, and I hope, and I pray now that they are brought to account for what they do. I, I hope this is not ending only with with uh, Chad and, and, and Laurie's indictments yesterday. I, I want to see that circle uh, investigated. I think there's charges to be, to be had. And I, I don't want the scapegoats only to be Chad and Laurie. I want other people held accountable also. And they will, I, that's, that's, that's part, one of the next steps is, I, I believe law enforcement already knows, they know what their, their next step is. Absolutely. And we just pray that it's, it's, they're taking down everybody that knew and could have stopped this. I don't care if they thought it was due to religious reasons that, that they were turned deemed zombies and then they show up dead. Okay, well, they weren't stu that stupid enough to not know that, that you don't kill kids, that you don't kill anybody. And speaking of other people involved, 
allegations, their big allegations against Alex Cox, who's not here, Lori's brother, essentially accused of conspiracy to commit murder uh, in these three deaths. Do you, you have to wish, right, that he, he was here to be prosecuted and, and questioned for all this because he's all over the paperwork here. Right. Justin, think about this. And th this is sort of hitting the bullseye. There were four people in that room the day that Charles was murdered. Yeah. Four people. Three of them are all dead. Two that had absolutely nothing to do with this, being JJ and, and Tylee. And, and you can't... You only just, Lori is alive. Only Lori is alive. Think about it. I mean, as far as Alex dying of natural causes, I don't believe that. I'll never believe I, that. I truly think that that's good. Something's going to come up with that. Uh, yeah. That 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 is too coincidental. And the date, if he would have died a month later or a month earlier, you know, I could say mm, maybe not. But the the day was it the day after Tammy was exhumed. Yeah. Hello. I mean, come on. Yeah. That that is no. And you can't it's tell me. Yeah. You're right. And you can't tell me that there was some substance used to kill him and to kill Tammy. And uh, I don't know. I, I I'm not a forensist. I don't want to be, but I'm I'm not stupid either. <laughs> And, and so for three of the people in that, uh, four, well, three of the people in that room the day that Charles was murdered and three of them are dead now, that is not a coincidence. That is premeditated murder. Well, what are your thoughts? Concerned. What are your thoughts, though? This is also disturbing. There, I don't know if you knew this. There are text messages between Chad and Lori, July 30th, 2019. This is just weeks after Charles's death, talking about death percentages. I don't know exactly what the definition of that is tailing to, but for Tammy and JJ specifically, this is July 2019. I don't know if you just found this out, but your reaction to that statement. I want to know what death percent, yeah. and actually we're, we're, I, I, we're getting with Rob today, and that is one of my, I, actually I need to write it down, is that's one of my big questions. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, until yesterday, I, I never heard. I, we have that. never heard this statement. Yeah, I and mean, you've heard a lot. And this and was we've something heard a lot. That, yeah. And I mean, we we are given a lot of information, and not one time has <clears throat> has one individual uh, mentioned anything about that. So that is something new, and obviously we want to be schooled on it. What What did Rob say to you before you guys blanked out? You know, what do you remember of what he told you yesterday? He began reading the charges um he had a, a paper with the list on there uh, with a list of the charges and he began reading them to us and uh, i don't know at some point i just kind of zoned out I, I uh it just like i said a while ago it just it's it just the world just stopped and there wasn't a sound between me and Larry and um, well, I really can't speak for Colby and Kelsey, but it, it just was silence. And it's like, we just had that to, room got so quiet it, that you could have heard a, a spider call. And, and I, I mean, it was quiet. quiet. And, uh, and Rob was, uh, he was Rob. I mean, he was stoic and uh, just presented the facts. He had to immediately, upon reading those facts, uh, he had to, to leave to do a, a statement and, and told us, he said, we will have, we will meet tomorrow, today, and uh, we'll go over this. And, and as Kay just said, and I've said, honestly, from that point on. Well, it, I, I, I do remember, I, I asked, what about capital murder? What about capital murder and conspiracy? And he said, well, there's an Idaho 
statute that's, you know, kind of, I don't know if I said kind of weird, these are my words, but um, within six, 60 days or so, that's all that would be decided. Did, was that him that told us that? Or, no, um, I think it was that. It wasn't, it wasn't Rob. Yeah, it was. Like I well, said, it, things assistant. got really fuzzy. Yeah. yeah. Do you want prosecutors to pursue the death penalties for both Absolutely. of them? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Absolutely. You don't. So do that what pretty they much. Did. Okay. You Go don't ahead. do what they did to so many people and not have the death penalty available. On the table. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, absolutely. Yes. So I'll end with this. What will it be like when you see both Chad and Lori arraigned today after everything now that you know, it just keeps on increasing all the details you have? We wanted to be on the Zoom also, and they asked the judge in our behalf if we could be on it and Colby could be on it, but he um, denied that. So we'll be watching it along with everyone else and seeing it. I wanted, I really wanted to be there to see. I wanted to have the same look, that smug look that Lori had at her arraignment in March of 2020 when she came back from Hawaii. And I think that's when it was. And um, I wanted to have that smug look so I could give her that look the way she gave it to me, but uh, to us then. But it's okay. I'll, it's okay. Is it because you know now that back then she knew what she knew while <clears throat> we were all still wondering where the kids were and she gave you that look as she walked off knowing everything that we now know now? Yeah. Absolutely. That's evil. That is pure evil. Uh, Kate calls it pure evil. I, I call it pure greed, lust. And, and not caring, obviously, for the kids, not caring for Charles, and only herself, only for herself. And I, I just, it's just not right what they did to the kids. It's not right. And uh, I, I, I pray the court makes the right decisions. I pray that the district attorney's office is, is still as uh, aggressive as they have been. I, I just, I think yesterday when Rob said they spent thousands of hours on this is, a, is an understatement. I just, I just can't imagine the stress that these people, these officers, these investigators, the FBI, the state investigation, everybody else has been under because we know for a fact it has not stopped one time. And how much we appreciate everything oh. they've done. And I, while people thought that we're griping on Facebook groups and whatever, why aren't they press charges? Why don't they, you know, the whole world was a mess because of COVID and and, and then, you know, our world, we got COVID. We had two hurricanes. We, you know. Had a it, blizzard in South Louisiana. It, it just, things just kept coming. So this is happening in time. It's not happening in our time. It's happening in God's time. Yeah. And everybody does need to remember that. And that's the only way that we've been able to, uh, to deal with it. And so let's just pray COVID kind of stays at, at bay. And let's get this these murder trials going. I, I don't know if they're gonna uh, separate them. I, I don't know how any of that works, but we'll find uh, let's out. just get this going. Get it going. Let's get yep. it done. Okay, Larry. Uh, again, always so much respect for you guys and how you guys have handled this whole entire journey. So thank you again for uh, taking the time. It's uh, we're about to get into this arraignment right now, and uh, we'll hopefully talk soon. All right. Thank right. Justin. Anytime we Bye. can chat, please call. Mm -hmm. Thanks, right. Justin. Bye.